Hello, today we're going to talk about raking your lawn in January. I know you're all raring to go and the possibility is there because it's nice and dry here, grounds firm. But before we can start raking, there's a few pre-raking steps that we need to follow to ensure that it's safe to start. So what are the rules we need to follow to make sure raking our lawn is possible? We've got rule number one is, is the ground wet? Does your foot when you stand on the lawn sink? and leave a visible footprint. If so, then this is a no-no. You can't scarify when it's like this. And rule number two is when you stand on it, does water come up over the side of your shoe? Again, this is a no-no, because if we do that, all that's gonna happen is our scarifier is gonna sink, the blades are gonna go too far in, and we're just gonna end up with a mud bath. And then of course, we've got rule number three, which is check for detritus. So what we'll do is, we'll do rule one and two, and we'll hopefully pass those, and then we can get them with rule three, which is moving all these twigs because all that will happen is they'll get caught in the scarifier and there's possibility that they could fly out and injure you because I have my scarifier flap open and we don't want that happening because that really does hurt. So let's get that done now. Okay, so I'm just walking over the lawn. I'm just going to find a few spots to do the footprint test. And we're really firm on this side. I've no concerns whatsoever. I knew before I started that I would pass this one. Not because I've been on and checked already, but it's just so firm. Uh, like 12 months of the year, this lawn. So no worries. And there's no water coming over our foot, as we saw before. So that's absolutely fine to go on with. So what I can start doing now is picking all these twigs up like last time. I'm glad I wasn't here when that fell because that could have been bad news. They might not look that heavy, but let me tell you, they are. So let's get these picked up and then we'll get on with our raking and I'll show you how we're going to do that and what machine we're going to use today. All right, so they're all nicely picked up again. I'll just leave them behind the hedge and they'll just dry out and become kindling for my chimney here at home. So that's nice and cleared now. That big one was really heavy. I've just put that behind the edge as well, back where it came from in terms of what uh, the land it lies on, where the tree grows, that's fine. So what we'll do now is we'll get the machines out and I'll show you what we're going to do and why. Okay, so we're just about to commence scarifying. Why am I scarifying at this time of year, do you ask? It's because we've treated the moss and now it's gone black. Because it's so wet, whether moss has been treated or not, it still holds water. So even though it's black at the moment, it's still holding a lot of water. Moss likes water, so it's just regenerating. So we need to get rid of some of that moss so we can get the water through so the moss finds it hardest to grow. And the more we do this, the more we're going to attack that moss lower down. So let's talk about what machine we're going to use today. There's a few options available. Now you could use a hand rake, the old spring back rake, or spring time rake, I always call it spring back rake. Uh, but that is just too big to do. So we can use a scarifying attachment like this. Now, if you don't have a petrol one, you could pick up an electric one. I had a look before for about 80 quid from like B&Q or Screwfix or something like that, which will do just as good a job as that other than it's electric, so it's just a case of throwing it over your shoulder and that. Uh, if you want to bind a lithium ion one, you can, but you're talking hundreds and hundreds just because of the battery. Uh, so we can use that, but Yield Faithful is back on the road. So we'll just have a look underneath. I'll show you the new blades. Have a look at those beauties. If I just show you as well, the old one which I took out, you can see how uh, much difference there is between an old and a new. And like I said, in my Facebook group, I've managed to secure parts for the scarifying blades, burrings, sc screws, uh, bars, etc. So this is going to keep running. So as long as that engine runs, this machine can keep running for the next five, six years. And then we might have to think about getting a new one because whatever parts are on the planet at the moment they're the only parts that exist they don't make anymore so the bearings uh, they are stock for lots of companies so i can get those but the bars uh, some of the screws some of the um like washers and things I can't get those anymore so what i've got now is all that's left so um hopefully this will keep going now so let's decide what we're going to do today i'm going to use ye old faithful because i think it's going to do a better job and then what we can do is we can go off on this after and pick up what's left after we've raked up, if anything. Uh, now, I did have some bad news to tell you, but I've managed to resurrect the situation. I thought I'd lost my bin. Now, I told you a few months ago that that cost a lot. Well, it didn't cost me anything. I found it, but there were a lot of money to replace. 
and they don't make them anymore. And I went to my van the other day to get it out and it wasn't there. And I was like, oh my God, I now know how the owner of the bins before I found them felt. But pulled up here today and it was just tucked under the hedge at the front there. So good news, I've not lost it. Um, so my heart was pounding when I thought I'd lost that. But good news, it's all been found, all good to go. So let's get cracking. Okay, so just about to start scarifying. Now, because we put the new blades on, and there's a lot of things that have worn down, like the wheels, they're not as tall as they once were, so obviously the machine has sunk a little bit. So this means the blades dig in a little bit further when um, I turn the dials. So if I was to put this on six here, that would be far too deep. That would just absolutely cause mayhem. So what I do is now, I'm at that point where neutral, which is supposed to run along the ground without the blades hitting, will be good enough to scarify this lawn. Um, and that'll be all I'll need to do at any lawn uh, throughout the year really. And then as the blades wear down, I'll have to turn the dial like to one, two. And I think by the end of last year, where I'd worn down the blades that much, six was barely touching the surface. So over a couple of years, the dial just gets moved further around. So let's get cracking. Oh, that was beautiful, like a warm knife through butter that with those new blades. So we've got quite a lot up, just enough to allow some water through and to remove some of that moss that's been treated. And then what we'll do is after we've rinsed it up, we'll get on with another iron application and then that will be it for today. So let's go and uh, get the rake out, we'll do a bit of raking and then we'll finish off with the outlet scarifier and then that'll be job done. Maybe cut it as well if there's any loose grass uh, sticking up but I think the outlet will probably do for today. But we can make a decision later on. Still early, bags of time, and we can get it done, no problem. So let's crack on. I just want to show you some, a little tip with the bladed scarifier that you should know, but if you don't, it's good practice. Okay, so when you're using the bladed scarifier, it's very important, this is just a little tip, that when you're turning, you lift the blades back. Because if you turn with them in, in play all you're going to do is create that forward motion of the scarifier sideways as well as forward so what it'll end up with you'll end up tearing the grass to absolute shreds and because you damage the crown of the grass it's not going to grow back and you'll end up with a big trench of just no soil but no grass will grow either so that's just an important tip i'd like to share with you today all right so now i've got the rake in the hand i'm beginning to feel a bit more springy as in like spring is not that far away. We've just scarified it once. That's all we need to do today. I'm not going mad. We will do it more and more as the year goes on. And then when we come to do our seeding, we'll do our final one, which will be a lot deeper and a lot more angles just to get rid of as much moss as possible. But for today, it's absolutely fine. So it's good to be back after Christmas. Not really a big fan of Christmas, to be honest. Well, I do like listening to the music channels at Christmas um, with all the Christmas songs. I just wonder, like, in 50 years, are we still going to be playing Noddy Older and that kind of stuff, or is there going to be a new generation of songs that will replace those? But a bit of a funny story from back in the 90s. I was flicking through the channels just whilst trying to find a decent music channel for the Christmas songs. Well, anyway... I came across uh, a channel playing Umbop by Hansen from about 96, 97. I remember the first time I saw that, I came downstairs and it was, I was like, oh, that's a good song, what is it? Like, and there was this uh, beautiful blonde on the keyboard, rings my friend up. I says, have you seen that pop, uh, Top of the Pops on? There's this like, really fit blonde on. And he says, Dan, I have, it's a bloke. So uh, if you made that mistake, leave me a comment in the box just to make sure that there was other people who thought that as well and I'm not just on my own, a bit embarrassing. Um, maybe not for me, but for him, because 
he, a lot of people mistook him for a girl maybe, but um, yeah, I was quite embarrassed, still am, but I've learned to live with it. And if anybody else it happened to could let me know, I'll feel a lot better. So I'll get on with this raking and then we can get the alert out and finish it off. Alright, so just have a closer look. So you still still quite a lot of moss left, but you can see that we've unearthed some green moss which hasn't yet been treated with the iron. So we've got rid of the majority of the black moss and now we've unearthed the green stuff which now we can put another application of iron on so the iron can actually penetrate through. The thing is there's that much moss, it only penetrates so far through the upper layer of moss and doesn't actually touch the moss below it. So we've got rid of the top section, another application of iron, and then in another few weeks, we can do scarifying again, I'm in a different direction, and this stuff that we're treating now will come up. So let's uh, get the alert out, and we'll do a better job of picking up all this stuff that's still on the lawn. We could use the hater to pick it up and give it a cut, but we're not actually gonna get rid of any more moss, so we can use the alert scarifier now to get rid of any more moss that might be loose or wanting to come up with the pass that we're doing. So we'll get on with that and we'll see how it looks. So I've just done the first passes with the Alec scarifying attachment in the mower. So you can see we're getting up all a lot more moss that necessarily wouldn't have come up with the bladed scarifier. The bladed one's good for a good aggressive one but there's gaps in between the blades, whereas on the Alert Scarifying Attachment, there's tines all the way across, even though they're not together. There's a gap, but then there's one behind, three or four inches behind, creating 100% scarifying width, and that is good then for picking up all this stuff. So we'll get that finished off, and then we'll get on with some iron. So if you like the video so far, please click the like button. It gives me an idea of what you guys want to see going forward. And whilst you're there, if you wouldn't mind subscribing, that'd be also be fantastic. All right, so I've just finished with the alert. If we have a zoom in now, we can see we're a lot cleaner, got rid of a lot of that debris that was still left after raking. So we just exposed what's left of the green moss. So I'm going to treat that now. I've got everything mixed up, so we're good to go. So let's get that done. So we're ready to spray. What I've got mixed in here now is 200 grams of Inhibit, which is the powdered soluble iron. And then in with that, I've mixed 400 mils of Galactic Green. One is going to give us a little bit of nitrogen as well to keep that grass growing a little bit, which is going to help suppress the moss and stop it coming back. And then the two hits of iron, which are going to do a real good favour as well. So let's get on with that. And then afterwards that, we'll tot up what we've priced up, what we've uh, cost the customer, and then we can go on. Okay, so that's this video done on raking your lawn in January. Hopefully this weekend holds up for you and you can get on with it yourself. Now let's just recap what we did. We followed the two rules, which is whether we can scarify or not, whether we leave a footprint in the soil or water comes up over our shoe. And then rule number three was then clearing the detritus off so we didn't get injuries. So we did all that. We then went on with the bladed scarifier, raked it off, then went on with the Alex scarifier to pick up anything that we'd left. And then we've just been on with the galactic green and the inhibit soluble powder. So let's just toss up what we've cost. So we've used 400 mils of Galactic Green, which is a uh, fiver, five British pounds. And then we used 200 grams of Inhibit, which is uh, two quid. So um, we spent seven quid there. On top of what we spent last time, which was, I think, 20. We spent 27 quid so far. So not too bad for two applications. And we're slowly working our way through the moss. 
So in a month, I think we'll come back and we'll do the same thing again, another Scarify, and then that'll be early March, and then maybe another iron application and another Scarify, and then we'll be ready then mid-March to start our overseeding and top dressing. We can start earlier because we've got a good, thick, vigorous lawn to come through on top, so I don't need to worry about frost or anything like that. We can just let that sit there and the old, the old grass will give us some protection. So join us next time when we'll be doing something else lawn related. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, and that's it for today. So we'll see you soon.